Welcome to Christ Alone Evangelical Lutheran Church of Thienesville in Mecklen, Wisconsin. As we gather for worship on this, the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter, to rejoice in our Savior Jesus Christ, to focus our faith on Him and all that He has done for us, may we be committed to follow the Good Shepherd. Our worship begins with the singing of our first hymn, Come, you faithful, raise the strain. We gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, 
I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless worrying and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of all people everywhere, that they may receive from you all they need to sustain body and life. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the spread of your life-giving gospel throughout the world, that all who are lost in sin may be brought to faith in you. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For patience and perseverance in this life, that we may not lose the hope of heaven as we await your return. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord of life, live in us, that we may live for you. Amen. Join with me in the prayer of the day. O God, you are the giver of everything good. Inspire us, your humble servants, to long for what is right, and through your gracious guidance, accomplish it to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this day, which will also serve as a text for our sermon, is recorded for us in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts. We begin reading at verse 8. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet! At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. 
When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lyconian language, The gods have come down to us in human form! Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates, because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derbe. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. This is the word of our God. We now hear a selection by our preschool choir. Our second reading takes us to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 21. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. This, too, is the word of our God. We join together in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia! Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Alleluia! Our gospel reading is recorded for us in the Gospel of John, chapter 16. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you'll see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I'm going to the Father. They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. 
Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Our worship continues with our hymn of the day, In You is Gladness. Grace to you in peace from our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As was mentioned earlier, we'll be studying the Word of God as it's recorded for us in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts. I just share with you towards the end when it says, Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. And your brothers and sisters of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, how we get the news has changed over time. How we keep up and current events has changed over time. It used to be you'd talk with your neighbor and find out what they knew. You might gather around the water cooler, as they'd call it, and Find out what was going on. Catch up on the sports teams. Catch up on the news. Catch up on some politics and the like. But now there is so much news out there. How do you keep up with it all? Well, courtesy of the internet, you can just find out what's trending. You go on any of the search engines and they'll tell you what's trending. What are people looking up? What's important to people? And it's interesting to see what's trending. 
because a lot of times it's what celebrity has done some audacious thing, audacious thing, and we think about it, wow, that's trending. They're looking up that name a lot, or they're looking up some event a lot, and more people that are looking up, that means that's trending. Now, that's okay. I'm not speaking against what's trending. There's an interesting thing about keeping your news and, and learning from what's trending. Because if you go on, find out what's trending, shut your computer down or go to a different site, then come back and you see what's trending, guess what? The list has changed. It's not the same. Because, well, people have their ways of thinking and their ways of doing things. and More important things coming out. There might be a new celebrity they need to follow. And so, to find out what's trending isn't necessarily the best way to build a lifetime or a commitment in life to just follow what's trending because it changes. You know, things were trending in Paul's time too. And we see how the trends changed. Trending is not the way to run your life or to have your faith because our faith doesn't change. Not like trends change. Not like attitudes change. Our faith is to be secure. And we see that faith in the Apostle Paul this day as he has a faith built on fact not on trending. We follow his example. As we have him on the missionary journey with Barnabas. And there we're making, he's making it the little, it's called the little fish hook tour because he's going to the various towns in, in the area. And as he visits them, he's sharing the gospel. This is new to all of them. They hadn't heard this. Now, we have to remember, while we are in the Easter season, the events and the news of Christ's resurrection that's decades past already. This isn't current events for them. Paul was sharing history with them. The fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies, the fulfillment in Jesus, but this was years ago. And as he shares this information, many people are excited. One of the gifts that God had given the apostles early in their ministry was the gift of healing and of miracles to validate their message. How else would they be known? How else could they validate it? But the Lord gave them that ability at this time. We see him using that ability in Lystra. When he says, There was a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. We get intricate details here, don't we? Because this isn't someone who just sprained his ankle and now all of a sudden he can walk like it's really no big thing that Paul done. Here is one who could not walk from the time he was born. And Paul comes up to him as he listened to his message, Paul's message. He looked at him and saw in his eyes, the windows to the soul they call the eyes, looks in his eyes and see that this man believes. And then he does something miraculous. He said, stand up on your feet. And at that, the man stood up and began to walk. First time ever. He didn't have to learn to walk. He didn't have to learn balance. He didn't have to learn like a toddler would first learn to walk. He stood up and he walked. That's powerful stuff. That validates the message that Paul has given to the people, telling them that what he says is true, that he has this authority from God to share this message. It was not a power that Paul had in himself, but it was the gift that God had given to him to use. <laughs> and what was trending then? Oh boy, Paul, the gods have been among us. They're here. They thought because he could do this that Paul was a god. It fits with their paganism. Because remember, their gods, the gods of Olympus and the gods that the Romans followed and the Greeks followed, they all had human qualities. Often there was a blending of human and deity together. And so they would follow this. And they thought now Paul, because he could do this, was one of the gods. Oh, we have to worship him. And notice the crowd saw that and they shouted, the gods are among us. They called Hermes. They called Paul Hermes as a spokesman. They called Barnabas Zeus. Oh, they had it all set. There was a festival held in the honor of these gods. Even the priest of Zeus kind of gives you about how much he knows about what he's doing. He comes to offer sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas. That was trending at the time. Paul and Barnabas. These strangers from out of town, these strangers with a new message, these strangers with this power to heal someone who had been lame from birth. 
They were the ones now to be worshipped and followed. And of course, we know that wouldn't sit with Paul. It wasn't about Paul or Barnabas at all. No, as a matter of fact, it was always about Jesus Christ. It was the love of Christ that compelled Paul to do what he did. How easy it would have been for Paul to start saying, hey, this is, this is going to be quite the gig here. I'm going to have this really well done here. Everybody's going to be worshiping me. They're bringing me all these things. He could have done that. He didn't. Matter of fact, he and Barnabas got very upset and had to explain to the crowd, why are you doing this? We too are only men, human, just like you. He had to convince them, we're bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things, which were trending to them, to the living God, who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way. Yet he's not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their season. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. He was telling them the truth. He was trying to convince them that there was one who is over him. He himself is not God. There is the God who created all things. But they wouldn't follow. He said, even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. I wonder how many people consider Mother Earth the one that they should serve. As if Earth itself created everything and those who walk on it. I wonder how many others might look to medicine or to science as these are the new gods. What's trending for us? Who's in charge of our lives? Who has the power over us? Are they convincing us to sacrifice to them? Are we listening to Paul as he brings us the good news of a creator who so loved his creation that this creation that had walked away from him, sinned away from him, he would bring back, fully pay for their wrongdoing and their sin, love them, and then what? Provide them rain, seasons, and all the blessings of this life. Who are we following? Who's trending in your life? Who is the God you worship? I know you're here listening to this sermon and we're going, well, it's obviously Jesus and obviously God. And yet, Satan's pretty good, isn't he? About changing what trends in our lives, what our focus becomes. And it's not always Jesus, is it? A lot of times the focus is on us. What's in it for me? What's to my benefit? We think of all the terrible things that are going on in society. Curfews have to be put in place in the cities. People are shooting people for no reason at all. They're traveling miles to go shoot people because they think there's some evil about it. We see this take place. And what are the gods they're following? What's trending in society's life? What's trending in our life? If it's not Jesus Christ, it's time to find a new God. If it isn't Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, we have some serious correcting to do. And we might want to just give up on what's trending and go with what's factual. Jesus Christ, creator of all, Lord of all, Savior of all, your Lord and Savior, which we learned just a couple weeks ago, we talked about him as our good shepherd who would lay down his life for the sheep. There is no other God besides Jesus Christ. When God in the first commandment says you are to have no other gods, he's very serious about that. It's a command, not a suggestion. And we have but one God, our creator, the giver of life, the one who can take life, the one who created everything and sent his one and only son that we can be forgiven. If we follow anything else that is trending besides Jesus Christ, we're following the wrong path. How committed was Jesus? How committed was Paul to Jesus? We see that coming up. Here he's preaching the truth to the people, trying to persuade them, don't look at me as a God. Don't look at me as someone else who might you, you can worship and, and give sacrifices to. No, that's not me. I'm human just like you. But then he goes to tell them about the true God. 
And what a great God that is. But what happens? Even as they continue to sacrifice, we're told that there were some Jews that came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. These are places Paul had already visited, had already shared the good news of the gospel, had already showed that which was in contrast to the Old Testament law, which Christ had fulfilled. And they didn't like that message. So they dogged him. They trolled him, you might say. They followed after Paul. And we're told they won the crowd over. A little bit amazing to me how fast people went for what was trending. Even at this time. Paul couldn't convince them not to worship him, not to bring him sacrifices. He gave them, he just laid it out very clearly for them. They wouldn't give up on that. But here now, some other strangers from out of town come, and what? They won the crowd over. I'm not sure what their message was. I'm not sure how they've made Paul look in the sight of all the other people. But they won the crowd over. To the point of what? The crowd that once wanted to sacrifice and worship Paul and Barnabas did what now? They stoned Paul, dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. That's what happens when you follow what's trending. Because what's trending isn't always right. What trend, what's trending isn't always what we should be doing. Beware of what's trending. Because it doesn't always follow Jesus. The crowd was won over by those who wanted to deny the gospel message that Paul was sharing. That those who didn't want anyone else to hear of their salvation didn't care for the souls of others at all. And they literally stoned Paul and thought they'd killed him. Dragged him outside the city walls thinking he was dead. Can't have him die in the city. Take him out probably to the rubbish heap out there someplace. And left him, thinking he was dead. That's what people do when they follow what's trending. But what did Paul do? Well, they thought they'd killed him. Interestingly enough, it says, but after the disciples had gathered on you, imagine how heartbroken they must have been when they saw Paul, the man that they had listened to, the man that they believed was teaching the truth and teaching them about Jesus. When they saw him dead, but what, they gathered around him and he got back up. You can only imagine. He's bruised and beaten and he probably has to dust himself off from being dragged outside the city. He gets himself all dusted off. Does he leave? No. Does he say it's not worth it? No. Does he say following Jesus is too hard? No. Does he quit? No. He dusts himself off and goes back into the city. I don't know if there was going to be a repeat of everything now. Are they going to think of him as God because he came back from after they had killed him? I don't know. We're not told, but he went back into the city because he had a purpose. The love of Christ compelled him. The souls, even of those who followed what was trending and thought of him as a God and then thought of him as an evil to be gotten rid of, he went back for those souls. He went back to teach them the love of Jesus Christ. The same love of Jesus Christ that he has for you and me. That same love, that same forgiveness, that same message. You see, that hasn't changed. The message of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, your salvation and mine isn't trending news. It's the facts. It is the news and the only news worth listening to because it's the only news that doesn't change. We hear the sad news of shootings and murders and all that are taking place. The names change, but it all seems to be the same, doesn't it? But God's word doesn't change. God's love for you doesn't change. Not by popularity. Not because more people are listening to this and to that. God's love for you is boundless. It doesn't change. It's not trending it's just fact. Too often Satan would convince us to go with what's trending because it's easier to go with the flow, isn't it? It's easier to go along with what everybody else seems to be doing. What would Paul have done if that were the case? He'd have probably quit, gone back home, 
probably gone back to Tarsus, but he didn't. Dusted off, he was ready to go in to continue to share that good news. A lot of times we're going to be pushed out, we'll be thrown out, we'll be considered lost. It's time to dust ourselves off and go back in. Jesus said no one was going to love us because of him. They didn't love him. They're certainly not going to love his disciples. And yet we have a message. A message of joy. A message of truth. A message that doesn't change. We have the message of Jesus Christ. May that be our focus. Not just a trend, but a way of life. A way of life that leads to eternity. That's a fact, not just trending. Follow Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ brings to us ever keep your hearts and minds in that true faith till we stand with him in glory everlasting. Amen. And now I invite you to confess with me that wonderful faith which God has worked in our hearts using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in the prayer of the Church. Almighty and merciful God, on this glorious day, we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increase our faith that the message of the empty tomb may fill our lives and make us glad each day. When we are weak, be our strength. When we are sad, be our song. And when we sin, be our salvation. Remove the hurt of death from all who mourn. In moments of grief, call believers to the voice of our Good Shepherd and embolden us to follow his promises. Wipe away tears born of death and give new birth to a living hope in the hearts of the lost and troubled. King of kings and Lord of lords, destroy all dominion, authority, and power that stands against you, whether seen or unseen. Triumph over our enemies and empower the church to fight the good fight to the end. Never leave us or forsake us. Walk among our churches, O living one, as the faithful witness and firstborn from the dead. Wherever we live and whatever we do, help us to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope that we have in Christ. Heavenly Father, keep the baptized united with your Son in his resurrection. Assure those searching for purpose that their eternal identity as your dear children is sealed. Thank you for the power of baptism and working in our lives and for the certainty of its promises through the resurrection. Enrich us with everything we need for life and godliness. And, O oh Lord of life, you have done mighty things for us. We pray that through him, who is the beginning and the end, Jesus Christ our Lord, his name is above every name, to the glory of God the Father, Amen. Hear us then also, O Lord, as we join in the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. 
Serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We bring our worship to a close as we join in singing the Day of Resurrection. We're so glad you were able to join us for worship today. And we invite you to join us again next week as we continue to worship our risen and living Savior, Jesus Christ. We're also glad to hear from you. So if you'd like to leave a message or two through email, you are welcome to do so. May the Lord richly bless you in the week ahead.